We're going to eat after the roast tonight. And the main reason for that is because we waited, if we waited until Mad Dog was done eating, we'd never get out of here. <laughs> now we're here tonight to roast two very deserving pigeons, Dick Van Heusen and Nick Mad Dog Castine. And my job is to introduce the people, so I'm not going to say anything that funny or anything like that. I'll be my normal self. <laughs> and you've heard of the not ready for primetime players from Saturday Night Live, but what we have tonight is the not ready for Dean Martin players. Tonight's roast will not resemble anything that we used to see on Dean Martin. For one thing, we've got me instead of Dean Martin. Another thing, we used to have the Waldorf Astoria. Here we have the Bullmart. <laughs> they had that great orator Orson Welles. We have Randy LaBombard. <laughs> Same size. <laughs> to, <laughs> to murder the English language, they had Norm Crosby. We've got Gary Favreau. <laughs> they had Don Rickles doing what he does, and we have Frank Dumas <laughs> doing what he does. They had Truman Capote. We've got Dennis Phillips. <laughs> they had Flip Wilson. We have Billy Glode. <laughs> and for the drinkers, they had Frost, Foster Brooks. We have Dale Cardan. <laughs> And of course, they had Phyllis Diller, and we've got Debbie Trombley. I'm a little nervous about being up here. I feel kind of like Elizabeth yeah, Taylor's next husband. <laughs> I'll get you. I think she will, too. I feel a little bit like Elizabeth well, Taylor's next husband. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not sure okay. if I can make it interesting for you. <laughs> now, as you all know, we have to keep tonight's roast a secret, because if we'd spread the word that for the price of a spaghetti dinner, you could come here and insult these guys all night long, we would have needed Madison Square Garden to really get everybody in there. <laughs> Now let's talk for a moment about our two honorees tonight, our two roasties. <coughs> Over the years, Dick and Dick have been booed, hooted, jeered, derided, mocked, and scorned. They have been castigated, maligned, insulted, ridiculed, and otherwise verbally assaulted. And I'm pleased to say that tonight will be no different. <laughs> First, Mad Dog Castine. He's just plain dog when you talk to him. He's just plain mad about when you talk about him. <laughs> now, the roasters have a very tough job when they're talking about Mad Dog. Because what can you say about this man that hasn't already been said about Muammar Gaddafi, Ayatollah Khomeini, Idi Amin? It's all been said. This man went to Park Safari last year, and the, an <laughs> and the animals rolled up their windows. <laughs> Dog is very lucky to have a wife like Holly. Let's face it, he's lucky to have a wife. <laughs> Holly is very, very faithful. She'd never even think of looking at another man. In fact, the way this guy is built, she hasn't finished looking at him yet. <laughs> I'm not saying he's overweight. This could be the first roast that ever had leftovers. <laughs> Dick Van Heusen and Gale. I go back a long time with the Van Heusens, back to when it was, uh, they weren't both Van Heusens, in fact. I remember, a long time ago. <laughs> many moons. I remember they graduated in 68 from Champlain. I remember about a year before that, in 67, I was driving Gale up to a dance at the Russell Point Elementary School. She was going to meet Dick there. I'm not sure who was playing. It was either the Ramrocks or the Gemtones. I know it was a small crowd, so that'd be one of those two bands. <laughs> anyway, I could never figure out what Dick and Gail had in common. So I came right out and I asked her. I said, Gail, what is it that you two have in common? I just can't see it. She said, we have one very important thing in common. We're both madly in love with the same boy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> it kind of takes a second to get to it, but yeah. Hey, you want to tell me? <laughs> Dick doesn't get it yet. <laughs> right, too? <laughs> As most of you probably know, I ran a basketball team for a number of years. It's called the Comets. And Dick played for the Comets for a while. And Dick never had a lot of respect for my coaching, but he always had a lot of respect for me as a ball player. In fact, I still remember the night that he quit. He told me to take the ball and stuff it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dick Van Heusen was and is a great all-around athlete. As a baseball player, he had one of the strongest arms ever produced by a local school. In basketball, he was one of the best five or six ball players ever to graduate from what is now the Northeastern Clinton Central School District. As a soccer player, he was junior college All-American goalie at Champlain College. And I'm sorry, Dick, I can't read the rest of your writing. <laughs> you had a good roll there, Cal. You had a good roll. Just a minute. Just a minute. We check that here. Oh, that that next, the next says this. Here. I'm sure you'll fill in the rest when he gets up here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dick is really a very humble person, and he has every reason to be humble. <laughs> now, we had a meeting about 10 days ago, deciding what we're going to do tonight. And a lot of the guys said they were afraid that they'd say, come up here and say something funny, or, and nobody would understand that was funny, and they wouldn't laugh. So I made an applause sign, and I see that Gary Trevor made a laugh sign when he is up here. Well, actually, I didn't make, I shouldn't say I made this sign. I borrowed it. I got to admit that. I borrowed it from Dick Van Heusen. He keeps it by his bedside. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I bring up our first roasters, I just want to say how much I really admire these two guys. I ran this league for one year. And after everybody started to hate me, I quit. These two guys have been hated all their lives, and they keep hanging in there. Now, a lot of you probably don't realize this, but when I resigned, a bunch of the guys in the league wanted to roast me. And if the police hadn't arrived in the nick of time, <laughs> they might have done it. Now, once again, I'll introduce our roasters. There's Frank Dumas, Randy Lombard, Dale Cardan, uh, Dennis Phillips, Bill Glode, and Gary Favreau. Now, these guys have swung a lot of old bats in their days. Especially on Thursday nights when his wives aren't around. That's. Debbie swung a lot of old bats. Just mentioning the men first. I'm just sitting here for coffee. Debbie Trombley. <laughs> Debbie Trombley. She's the only female roaster. And she'll be roasting, roasting Mad Dog. Dean would have done it, but he couldn't find his no problem, tag team we'll, partner. We'll hear her. <laughs> 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 you wait, you wait. <laughs> She's one of my protégés. <laughs> Our first roaster tonight is going to be Frank Dumas. Now we all know that Frankie loves to party. Where is he? There he is. I'm not saying that Frankie drinks a lot, but he's been on more floors than Johnson's Wax. <laughs> I, he used to be a beer man, but he's into hard stuff now. I once saw this guy trying to squeeze the juice out of scotch tape. <laughs> but as a ball player, you've really got to hand it to Frank. If you throw it to him, he's going to drop it. <laughs> Keep it going, Cal. You're doing good. <laughs> seriously, seriously, we all know Frank's got a great sense of hand, set of hands. And if you don't believe me, ask the waitress over here. <laughs> Frank. Jesus. You're on the outfield. 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 Oh. 
Okay, I go to start. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Calvin got his off the right foot. I hope everybody had a chance to have another drink. You know, um, I'm nervous, very nervous. You know. You said you know about six times now. I know. You know, I said it again. These two guys think that, you know, everybody's here to thanks to them and to roast them. Well, that's not true at all. They're here because they heard Carol's spaghetti is very good. And also, I think the thanks should go to the crowd, not to these two. Because you guys had to get sitters, take the chance to get DWI, just to come spend the evening with these two. That's, that's no good. Probably two of the be better budgeters we ever had in the league. We, uh, we pay 400 bucks a year probably just to use the lights and I don't know, we had one game in the lights. So that, you know, we, we did well. Thanks, <laughs> Frank, set me up for later in the evening. Mad Dog and uh, Richard, they really never got their dream in the Lake Champlain Slow Pitch League because uh, Transborder never asked Dog to play and Larry Drag. I think my gift to these two gentlemen would be a, a, a subscription to How to Fix Schedules. Because they're probably the best two there is at it. <laughs> well, you always have the remember whens. Um, can anybody remember Dick catching two balls in a row? Or not limping in from shortstop? <laughs> or do you remember seeing Dick looking at his favorite fan? <laughs> We all remember this. Um, we had a we had the uh, WWF one night out here, courtesy of Mad Dog. The WWF is World Wrestling Federation. He was gonna go at it with a tag team, but it got settled down. You lost. Oh, I did not. And uh, I have one question. I couldn't always figure out. It was probably 90 degrees, and we'd come out the field. You know, everybody's sweating. Dick puts his jacket on. You know, we could never figure this one out either. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie told me he wasn't prepared, and I guess he didn't lie. <laughs> Randy LaBombard. Bird. Randy grew up right across the road from here, as probably everyone here knows. And one day, his mother heard him and his sister Sue out there fighting. They're in the pool. He's got to go to the bathroom. I have that effect on people. Anybody else want to? Yeah, Calvin, I got to go over to the bathroom. Go ahead. You got to go? Yeah. <laughs> we better let him go. Cause no, no, no. <laughs> I'll control it. Okay. As long as Big Danny ain't here to yank the doors down. <laughs> hey, anyway, one day, Randy's mother, Judy, heard Sue and Randy out there fighting in the pool. So she went out there and she said, all right, you kids are going to each divide up the pool in two, and you each stay in your own half. And Bird, being very quick, he said, great, I'll take the top half. <laughs> I'll see how quick you are now, Bert. Get up here. When they asked me to roll somebody, I wasn't too crazy about it. But when they told me it was dog, I said, that's easy. You're off, <laughs> you're off early. <laughs> the woman and her relatives were here. I could have dog crawling out of here. <laughs> and believe me, nobody'd see him. <laughs> you know, when you talk about dog and dick. Uh, First thing you th think about is softball. Oh, well, dog, I started playing Sunday league with the Armstrong brothers, and they asked me to play on a Sunday, so I go there. And I get there, and there's this big animal running around with a shirt on, the sleeves cut off, no shoes. He's running around there playing, chewing grass, drinking Pepsi. Really impressed me between games, drank a six pack of Pepsi, played the second game, hit well. <laughs> I wonder what they would have said if I would have known that in five, six years from then, he'd be coaching my softball team. <laughs> I had a hard time thinking of what to say when I got up here. I didn't really know what to say. 
So I started calling the, the other guys on the team. I said, what would you say you know, if you had to get up there? And they all said this one thing to me. What are the two scariest words you ever heard come out of Dick Kastner's mouth when he's coaching you? And I thought about it, and sure enough, trust me. When he says trust me, hang on. <laughs> We don't play softball anymore, right? There's a few circumstances where we just don't want to do this anymore, right? So we have to find something else to do in the summertime to keep ourselves in shape. Hey, I'm talking, you know what I mean? Give me a chance, okay? I hear you all summer long, now give me a chance, all right? This is the only time that I can speak over you. I'm just recruiting, that's all I'm doing, just recruiting. <laughs> Never get the last word when I get it, right? <laughs> And I would like to thank Mrs. Fisk for bringing her son here 25 years ago. Thank you. <laughs> Debbie Tremblay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is the mic off? Oh, to shut it off, yeah, I understand. You know that? Frankie mentioned the World Wrestling Federation. You know that little manager, Jimmy Hart, mouth of the South? Well, he's just lucky that Debbie's up north, because he'd have to change his name. Now, you might wonder why a woman is here honoring the past president of the men's league. Debbie, I'm not going to be mean to you, just believe me. Oh, but yeah. Debbie has always been sports-minded. When she was a little girl, her parents gave her you know, those little baby alligators. They gave her one of those. They found her a little while later in the kitchen. She'd put it in a blender. She was making Gatorade. <laughs> Here's Debbie. <laughs> head up north for a while. Man at the customs comes out with a smile. Where are you boys headed? How long in Quebec? To eat Chinese food. Couple hours we expect. Returning much later around 2 a.m. American customs man gives Dog's front plate a scan. As he approaches the car, Doug, Dog butts his cigar and answers all questions with ease. If your only mood was to eat Chinese food, said the officer, then what are these? Mm. Through the windshield not clean, a bright matchbox was seen. Then the man in blue gave a grin. And Dog said, You never heard of this, Donna? Ribs couldn't be finer. I sure wish you had been. You're a man about town. You do get around. To that, I would have to agree. For who would have thought Wong Tong soup could be bought at a place called the Shea Perry? <laughs> that says shut your mouth <laughs> no. okay um when dragoons farm equipment and Walmart are playing against each other mad dog and i try to out yell each other or i should say i try to outdo him which i don't usually do no although they i've come close i've come close and one night we had a game and at the end of the game 
he came over to our dugout and he said, uh, I thought you might have some trouble keeping up with me and you might lose your voice and you might, you know, really have some problems keeping up with me. So I thought I would bring you this. And he folded out his hand and in his hand was a lamb's tongue to replace mine, which he thought I would lose. That was impossible. And since tonight is the one and only night that I will probably see him speechless, I hope, I brought him not only one lamb's tongue, but a whole jar. <laughs> It's <laughs> enough for everyone. <laughs> oh, they're good. Calvin? <laughs> Trying to quit. Is everybody drunk enough for Dale Cardan? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Like a few other ball players last year, uh, Dale quit the Barcombs team and went to the new uh, Dragons Septic Systems or what is that team? Whatever that is, a Dragons Club. And just to show those no hard feelings, Larry Barcombe gave every one of the guys who was leaving a present. And he gave Dale a new toaster. And just like Dale in the clutch, it popped up. <laughs> Dale? I a lot to be said for Dick Van Heusen. You lost the words. Yeah. I, uh, I always got along with Dick when we weren't talking. <laughs> Dick's always been a, as far as I'm concerned, we've always played side by side together. I've had to listen to a lot of excuses for, for why he missed this, missed that. But he's always he's he's always come out with a good excuse. <laughs> like this one time, he had a cut on his finger, and uh, he complained about it all during warm up. And he says, well, Dick, I says, you'll be all right? He says, yeah. He got a ground ball, never touched it. And he missed it, went through his legs, and he says to me, he says, boy, my finger hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I says, yeah. He says, mine does too, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> then he had a bad back once. Well... Dick's always had a bad back. <laughs> but why miss a line drive on a bad back? <laughs> I've always went along with what he said because, because if I didn't, I'd sit. <laughs> you said you were sad. Kind of makes you feel better now, eh, Frank? <laughs> Dan Phelps, I uh, walked by him today and I called him Bird. I was looking up at him and I'm used to, you know, of course his nickname is Tree. And a lot of people think they, he got that name Tree because of the size he is, but it's because of the way he runs. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see Romy Dumadel here. Romy's been coming to functions like this for a long time. In fact, if you look close at that picture of the Last Supper, <laughs> our next roaster is Bill Glowed. <laughs> Bill Karen. set the record last year for most consecutive slumps. <laughs> How did you ever get a book? <laughs> this guy
guy's been kind of a hard luck ball player. Seems like he's always recuperating from a broken leg or something. Last year, this man had the flu, and his temperature was higher than his batting average. <laughs> Come on up, Bill. <laughs> I think the, uh, the biggest moment of Doc's career was uh, the game we let him play. Uh... <laughs> go, Billy, go. Our back. Two minutes. <laughs> my final. I'm standing on first base uh, waiting for Doc to hit the ball. He hits this uh, towering fly ball to right field. Left field. Right field. Left field. He goes running down the line totally fast right. as he can go. He like dives head first into first base on a fly ball to right field. <laughs> Takes the person out of first base and it was the first time they ever had a double play with Harbeck that way. <laughs> Who's the person? Bill, Bill. The Hill Glowed. Why wasn't he halfway? <laughs> because he knew you were hitting. <laughs> he was waiting for the tag. But uh, kept the league together. Uh, I hope you two will be there come springtime to put the fence up because none of us will be there to help you. <laughs> like you're <usual. laughs> The same six. <laughs> the same six every year. I'm glad uh, Bill mentioned the, these guys helping to put the fence up. After all, how many other leagues would have a roast for their groundkeepers? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Phillips, I know he's here somewhere. Because Dennis thought this roast was for him. I know he was here. Last year, Dennis set the Lake Champlain Slow Pitch League record for being thrown out at home. <laughs> Once at the ballpark and 60 times by Barb. <laughs> I'm here to roast Mad Dog. <laughs> no. You're wearing my jacket. Then how come you look like Van Heusen? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. We asked Debbie John Lee to say a few words tonight. We knew that'd be impossible. <laughs> As I look around, I see a lot of people who used to play ball with Dog, or for Dog, either in tournaments or in the league. So, I have a collection of some of the items we used during the course of the last couple of years. <laughs> Feeling light now. <laughs> First thing I have, Dale Carton's glove. <laughs> Occasionally when the game's well out of hand, Dog will pinch hit himself. By the way, dog, you left your bat at my house. <laughs> we have sliding in our league. You wouldn't know, Dick. A lot of us wear shorts under our uniforms because it kind of eases the sliding and eases the pain a little bit. Well, I had a pair of Bill Glodes here. <laughs> They're Calvin Castine designers. <laughs> Tom Harrigan played in a tournament with us last year, had a hell of a tournament. We decided we'd all get together and make a life-size statue. <laughs> we, we play a lot of tournaments on the road. One thing Randy Lombard always brings with him. <laughs> His motto, I don't leave home without it. <laughs> I see Jim Davison back there. The diary of every hit he ever had. <laughs> Okay, large enough. Hi, Dan. Do you think? I'd really like to thank Calvin for being the MC tonight. 
The reason we ask Calvin is we know he's not afraid to get in front of people and humiliate himself. <laughs> We've all seen him on Channel 21. <laughs> Alan, you haven't. <laughs> oh, you son of a... Good to see Dick Van Heusen here tonight, without crutches. Dog's a lot less apt to pick a fight with you. Last Monday... I think Dick Cole is the next one on our agenda here. Dick is our host for the evening. This man in his day, which was a long time ago, <laughs> was a great athlete. This man is, has the legs of a gazelle, the heart of a lion, and the eye of an eagle. Oh wait, that's tonight's menu. I got that mixed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nick, come on up here. It takes a special group of people, as far as I'm concerned, to pull something like this off. And I, and I think you people out there along with myself sitting here, see what a fantastic job these people have done and these people have done. I think we ought to recognize them right now because good job. Thank you. I want to get a couple of things to say and I got them written down. If I can pull the mic around here, I'll, I'll just read them off and then I know everybody can get to the chow line and, and after they hear Dick and, and Dick but I'm sure we don't want to hear them very much. <laughs> when you're a leader, you get criticism, and both of these guys have got a lot of it. I've heard it, I've seen it. They knew it before they took the jobs that they had, and I'm sure they expected it. <laughs> Never knew the kind of balls <laughs> <laughs> But it's obvious that the people in this room, as well as some other people who aren't here, know as leaders, you've both done a real fine job. You both have done more for the softball league than any other individual during your presidencies that anybody could even think about. And on behalf of all the people here, and some who are not here, I would like to present a gift to each of you from all of us as a token of appreciation for what you fellows have done over your years as presidency of the softball league. First of all, to Dick Castack. Dick Van Houten. <laughs> Norm's getting hungry. Just for that, Norm, I'm going to pick on you. Norm uh, is from North Troy, Vermont. Probably the, the only illegal alien here. Beat <laughs> <laughs> me down, Scotty, because no one tells you life here. <laughs> Norm Bono once entered a Mr. Spock lookalike contest, <laughs> and he finished first, and Leonard Nimoy finished second. <laughs> I'll call up Mr. Dick Van Heusen first. Go get him. Several years ago, I had the privilege of nominating Dick Van Heusen for the president of the Lake Champlain Slow Pitch League. We're all sitting around, I think it was at Butterball's house, and Butter had resigned. And we're looking for someone to step forward. And I knew Dick wanted to run this league in the worst way. And he sure did. Now Dick worked. Dick Van Heusen was the best league president the Lake Champlain Slow Pitch League ever had. These are my words, and my words say that this is the best man right here. Yes. 
And uh, I think it uh, wouldn't be right if we didn't recognize the longtime treasurer of the Lake Champlain League, Mr. Bill Conley. Glad he could be here with us tonight. And now comes the bad part. It's time to eat. 